We're moving right along. Stream, okay. Get all. Get all. Get all, sir. Rusa, maybe vowel raising. Lila. Long L. Gro. Gro. Alle mennene har lilla slips. Alle mennene har lilla slips. Alle mennene. Alle mennene har lilla slips. Har lilla slips. That's interesting. They chose an elephant instead of uh, another paint can. Oh, for gray? Gray paint. True. All men har. So, nor in the Norse language, I think it's just ha for the infinitive and har the inflected. Those are the, so the presence, the only tense I've seen. But I'm, my point is, I think it doesn't have a label anywhere. Like the hobbin and have. I think it's just all gone. All the men. Have on and purple ties. Blue. Blue. Lila. 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 Orange. Orange. I hear a really nasal and a single palatal fricative. Orange. The sound is probably due to French or maybe German through, I mean, French through German. Perhaps, and the spelling Shit. reminds me of Dutch. Blue. 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 Leser hun en blå bok? Leser hun en blå bok? Leser hun en blå bok? Well, let's collect some noun phrases for Norwegian inflection. En blå bok. Leser hun en blå bok? En bok. Bok. So, no ending here. No apparent ending on blå. And no ending, and this is a masculine now, I think. Unlike German. Nominative. There's not really a case, I don't think, with anything other than pronouns. Although it's possessive. Pink. Rosa. Rosa. Jeg står ved det hvite gjære. Jeg står ved det hvite gjære. The R-D cluster simplified. Oh, we have R and D. No, never mind. It's a V. Jeg står ved det hvite gjære. Ved det hvite gjære. So all the final dental stops are silent. Jeg står ved det hvite gjære. Ved det hvite gjære. And it's I stand near by the white fence is what it is. It's related to the word yard and garden. But it means fence, referred to an enclosure. Jeg vil ha den hvite kjolen. Hvite kjolen. Jeg vil ha... What's the word bank? Jeg, yeah, with it. Jeg. Hvad er det? I diphthong. Vil. Ha. Ha. Vil is inflected. Zero marked. Ha is the infinitive. Jeg vil ha den hvite kjolen. Den is strongly reduced. Den hvite kjolen. Kjolen. Means. That's a kjol. An article of clothing. Scarf. Dress. Kjolen. That makes me wonder if shawl is somehow connected here. Gustav got the Swedish one. One of three words of initial K J in Swedish. Oh. Okay. Jeg liker ikke grå klær. Jeg liker ikke grå klær. There too, the fricative is dropped. Klær. Clothing word. Kleida. Jeg liker ikke grå. And there, the lack of anything on the adjective is worth noting. I don't like 
I like not gray clothes. And this one has no article. Zero there. Yeah, so in this question, you uh, mm -hmm. uh can we, uh, what exactly is going on syntactically? What is the scope of this? Excellent. That's a great question. So, before I give you my thoughts there, which I'm happy to do, what is your feeling about English not? Is it like uh, the basting negator? What's its scope? Uh, I think it negates verbs. True. Or and, specifically, uh -huh. you have like, it can negate auxiliaries, it will negate main, like the main verb of the sentence, often with do support. Any other classes of words? Unless it's an auxiliary. Yeah, you'll need to throw in do to negate something unless it's an auxiliary. No, I mean in the scope of uh, not. Is okay. it only verbs that it negates or other things too? Well, if you have... No, no, no. You can do adjectives exactly. as well, right? So you can say this is not red or something. Any other type of thing that one could negate with not? Uh, I don't think nouns are. With nouns, I think you would just say no. Like, I have no dogs or right. something. People do call themselves things like not Emily. That's true. That, so there's a case. It's not a real, it's not a standard feature of English by any means. But you do see it in other things. What do you think? Does this sound good or bad if I say not on top of the house? That recognize a recognizable stretch of English to you or does it seem alien? Yeah, that seems fine. Yeah. Are you on top of the house? No, I am not on exactly. top of the house. Yep, for me too. Oh, the on, the prepositional begins, of course, with the preposition on top of the house. So that's the kind of thing that can be negated by not as well. This doesn't really have to do with Norwegian. Let's take it out. Well, it does have to do with it. It's all connected, but it's not subordinate to it. Not Emily. So we can get it with a noun marginally. That that one's the, like, to me, feels the newest, the slangiest. We can have not mm -hmm. plus, I'm going to put a word boundary sign there because I don't... The only thing it fuses with to me is not, is, sorry, this verb do. And not really, well, can't, that's not true. Verb, auxiliary is the class of name. Do being the main auxiliary, unmarked for flavor, and then can, will, should, must, and so on. So not will negate a verb. Not will negate an adjective. But then we also have this no people. What was your example? No cats, no people. Uh, I have no dogs or something. Yeah. To me, the no is a determiner, or like a numeral specifier. Okay. It's empty quantity, so it, it's not the same sentence no, I think. We have two distinct, distinguishable no words, but really only one not, in my view. Not terribly choosy with regard to the word class. How about, can we get not and, and an adverbial? <laughs> Adverb. I don't think uh, adverb is really solid. I woke up not early class, today. Say again? I woke up not early today. Mm, that's question mark. Not early. Yeah, it doesn't sound so great to me. What if... Okay, now I was going to say what not likely. But likely looks like an adverb, but it's not. But some other adverbial, like not at 4 o'clock. How does that sound? Mm, when would you like that's, to meet? Not at 4 o'clock. That's, that's fine. That's but that's a prepositional, a prepositional phrase. Yeah, it is. Yeah, let me add that to the list. What's something that is pre adverbial but not, not slowly? <laughs> not, not quickly, not slowly. Neither quickly nor slowly. That's a different word, but... I think you could make that work. You could say, how did he proceed? Yeah. Not slowly. I could conceive of it, but it's it's far from prototypical. All right. But definitely with verb. Now, with the verb as its scope, should we say verb? Should we say verb phrase? Let's do both. Maybe they're not really distinct things. If we say it negates a verb phrase like, don't come near me. Mm -hmm. Everything from that the word. do 
to the near me is in the scope of the negative. That's where we want you not to come. And I would say, mm -hmm. maybe not. But my question is, if we just look at the scope of the verb that not negates, which direction is it pointing? Like, what usually comes first? The not and then the stuff that follows. <laughs> By definition, the stuff that follows comes later. Oh, no, you're uh, sorry. That's, yeah, you're saying that's the scope. I disagree. I think it's fundamentally, with a verb, it's fundamentally leftward pointing. Why do I think that? I cannot. In I English? Not, I do not. The do in a do not for do not verb phrase is the most essential part. We're not going to delete that. We can leave off the other verbal stuff. But I do not. It does not. What do you think? Okay. Convinced? Should I give uh, more examples? That's true. that's true for our auxiliaries, but for prepositional phrases, which yes. we established were fine, it is more rightward pointing. Uh huh, definitely not go to boldly go and no, we don't have the negative to be or not to be the not is definitely pointing right where there because the negative is the second mm -hmm. option first to be or not to be it's not to be not or to be the not is pointing right mm -hmm. but i think with the verb it's fundamentally the one to the next so in the in a case like may may go or something like that where we have a subject specified, understood, I, he, or he may go. Between may and go, which is the true verb of the sentence? Which, and which was like the imposter? May. The may is the true one. That's how I feel too. Now, if you negate it, it to gives us may inflected not. inflected verb. Say again? Uh... The inflected, yeah. <laughs> should time that better. The inflected one. Although may, strictly speaking, is not inflected, it's got no marking on it but that's the only form that would be work would work there for a for that auxiliary in modern english but yeah i think may mm -hmm. has its narrower scope and then there's a wider verb phrase that it, that it's part of but i think the structure in other words is like this we can take the pronoun that the not looks leftward in its effect its effect runs to the left primarily within a verb phrase but is that just a different way of saying that in germanic your default position is V2. Well, for English, it's a bit different. Can you... Uh, is it just V2? Well, yeah, I think this is... Maybe. I think our English constraint, that this, these English facts are governed by this... What I mean by V2 is the inflected verb in final and second position, right? Just for short. When we've seen over and over with German. And mm -hmm. final position. Oh, no, quite precisely not. Second position, the Grundstellung, so-called, although not really basic, but the most common in a declarative and those other sentence types that we looked at. Grundstellung. What are the morphemes there? How many morphemes in this word, Grundstellung? I see at least three. Agree. I don't count any more, just three. For me, unless you regard the... G is reflecting the old call, but as far as German parts, yeah, it's not an un that it contrasts with. But un is its own thing. Now, if that's true, he may not go. The reason that the not would go there and exceptionally look leftward for a verb might be because you tend to have your subject out in front. That's its own phrase. That's you know its own constituent of the sentence. So then the inflected verb just has to go in that slot, basically. And the negative word, ne the negating word, tended to follow. Now we do have not to be with the infinitive. Not tired. Well, that's not. That's tired. Yeah, it is a participle. Not seen. Not known. Those things. It is generally looking right right there with non-finite verbs, with those verbal noun verbal adjective. So that order. The noun, the verbal adjective. So with leaker now, in contrast, I guess your question, the, the main two options I see would be that Ike is a 
is negating the noun to its right or it's pointing leftward. And I think it's the latter. I think ike is exactly okay. equivalent to our not, but I could be wrong. Vi har tre hvite mus. It's happened before. Vi har tre hvite mus. We have three white mus. Tomatsuppen er orange. Orange. So, tomatsuppen, the end there looks like a plural, but it's not. It's definite. The tomato soup. So there's an important difference in our word order. Noun stem with an appended determiner like that. It's not the only way, but it exists in all of the Norse languages, fused into one word. So that seems a little uh, surprising from a Germanic perspective for the um, article to be at the end like that. Why do you say that? Well, um, in the other Germanic languages I know, uh, namely the West Germanic ones, it is not at the end. It's not at the end of the, yeah, of the noun. Of the noun. What do you think of, have you, does this seem like something on the margin, within the boundaries of your English experience? Brother mine. It's not what? an article. Brother mine, this phrase. Brother mine. Uh, Does, it mean, does that have a meaning to you in English? I think I not? have. It sounds archaic. Yeah, exactly. I agree. But it, you've got your head noun first and a determiner following. So to me, the fact that it sounds archaic, my point to the fact that it is archaic, and mm -hmm. even to be projected back as far as the as the ancestral language Tomatsuppen. with Norwegian. I think there was more flexibility at older stages of Indo-European. Oh. And it just came to be settled down. Now in Norwegian we still have options. There's another type of construction where you get a preceding determiner word. I hope we see some soon. But great questions all. Hans er grå. His coat. So here is that brother mine order. Now, of course, there's also fata unza. Can you tell us what this means or refers to fata unza? Jeg vil ha et lille bord og blå stoler. Anybody there? If you are, I can't hear you. Jeg vil ha et lille bord og blå stoler. I want to have, or we can just say I want. The here we go. Here is a phrase in huh? article upon request. I want a. It looks like maybe a different word, but it's a form of a numeral and indefinite. I want a purple bur is table. Purple table and blue stubur blue chair. Oops. Oh, what is and? Hvorfor er suppen blå? I think this OGO is related to augment. And those guys. Making bigger. It's of course German auch. Oh, I don't want that. I want OG. That's quite a statement. A purple go. table and blue chairs. Oh, fat. yeah. Aesthetically. Okay, I can hear you again. I mm -hmm. think you may have cut out or maybe you stepped away just held your tongue, but do you recognize this fata unza? Yes. It looks... I think it's pater noster exactly in Latin, right. right? That is what we have to identify. So this is, to me, I mean, we could cite this as a parallel, but treat this one with caution because it's modeled on the Latin translation of the Bible and not really an uh, inheritance necessarily, not necessarily an inheritance from Germanic, although the acceptability of the word order, its usability might be a bit of weight on that side of the scale. So this oak, og, meaning and, Germanic oak, which we have in German too, and this hog, to increase and enlarge. There it is. Oh wow, this is oh, auch. Auch, is that word? I think we have it underlyingly in the Old English for though, which was, I use eight for theta, theach. And that uch. Particle, maybe. 
Maybe actually with Owl, oh, that's a bad match. Strike that, please. Augustus of Latin. Do you recognize any of these Irish words? Uasol. Uas. A nickname will be related from English, right? Mm. Yep. Pur er sup blue. Why is the sup blue? Var fur er sup blue. Oh, but the word sup the word order that we were talking about pertains to the definite, maybe not. Har dere rosa sko? Har dere? Pink shoes. Rosa sko. You did it. Rosa or rött er farger. Rosa or rött er farger. Rosa or rött er farger. Er. So with the DT, that is a sounded thing. What do you make of that spelling? R U D T for red. Can you pronounce it again? Rött. Rosa or rött er farger. Rött. Put it up here. Orange okay, is a warm color. But I could be wrong. That is always a possibility. I think if it was just R U T, then it would be good. It would have a long vowel, so this kind of makes it have a short vowel. Actually, I think the T would be silent in that case. I think there is a morphing okay. boundary here. Red and then a neuter agreement suffix. Is okay. Yeah. Orange er en varm farge. Er en. Hva smaker den lilla isen? Hva smaker den lilla isen? Isen, the ice cream. Den lilla isen. Here we go. What do we see here? Uh, meaning the purple ice cream. What's our question about this sentence? What do we see in this phrase? Can you break it down, please? What kind of a phrase is it? It's a question. Uh, we have the verb in second position, just like we expect. No, I mean... Like, uh, wie schmeckt... Just this uh, phrase is what I mean. Yeah, that's right. Wie schmeckt. W H followed by the question, the inflected, sorry, the inflected verb. What do you see? What do we see in the lilla isen? Lilla is. Lilla. Vad smaker den lilla isen? It looks like it has its double articles, right? Exactly this right. in on yes. the end and this den in the front. That's right. With the, with the D when it's initial versus Dless when it's fused. That's right. But the same thing ultimately. That. Purple ice cream there. What min? should be the need for both articles? The fact that it, I don't know, it seems handy that it, I don't know that it's needed, but because when it's a single word, you, you just have the one. The fact that it's a two word phrase, maybe, it's mm. kind of nice, gives you the beginning and the end point of your noun phrase. What could be better? If German had that, I think you'd have a much easier time. Person, mm. person your way through the sentences. I will have a little board and blue stools. Right, because with those, what I keep calling the sandwich construction, maybe that's not the best term for it, but you know, those really heavy verb phrases with material intervening, mm -hmm. those cause confusion if you're not used to them. I will have a little board and blue stools. Stools. I will have a little board and blue stools. Stools. So it's I want to have, or just I want, the... Purple table. Now it's indefinite, and that article or numeral, same word here, is initial. I want, so not the uh, purple table. Ooh, and we need that word. And blue chairs. And the table. Oh, good grief. How hard is this? Har dere rosa sko? That's you. Do you have? Don't you have? Do you not have? Okay, that's interesting. So we're talking about the scope of not, right? We've got mm -hmm. the two positions there. What can we say about that? 
Did you not versus didn't you? What's the scope of not? Do you have a oh. school pink shoe? Jeg vil ha et lilla bord og blå stoler. Jeg vil ha et lilla bord. I'm just gonna wear bank it because I'm incapable of getting this one. Lilla bord. Table. And blue chairs. Hallelujah. So. Did you not is interesting. Welcome back to Language Would you say and we're joined by Levi, as you can hear. What's that, Levi? Uh, this did you not is interesting. How would what would you say is the scope of the not? Because if it looks immediately leftward, how does it know to skip the you? How does it know to? Does it even? I don't know. So at Lango, if you're new to us, welcome. We teach, in the order that we started hosting the language, English, Korean, Spanish, Chinese, French, German, Japanese, Portuguese, Italian. Hanja is the next thing. Chinese characters for Korean users. Something we're developing more of these days in our materials. Let's stay with North Korea. And if it's your first time watching what we're doing on this stream, is learning all the languages on Duolingo. One by one, one after another. Rarely two at a time. Money. En kvittering. Kvittering. So the non-initial stress makes me think it's not a Germanic word. En pose. Ooh, the high vowel. Penger. 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 So there's that falling motion on the stress syllable, and then nice clear upstep, like a fifth or so, to the unstressed hex syllable. In words like that's the dominant pitch pattern to my ear, but not the only one. In kvittering. En kvittering. Hvor mye koster denne skjorta? Hvor mye koster denne skjorta? Now, this one is not just the article. I think it's a dialect that. Oh, is it shirt? Shorta. This shirt is what it means. Den. Hvor mye koster? Hvor mye koster denne skjorta? Okay, not raised O here. Koster in that closed syllable. Hvor mye. And it's singular. Does this shirt cost? Hvor mye koster? Verb in second position. En kvittering. So, but my answer, I think my answer to your question, what, how does the not know, how does the word not know to jump over the U? Well, I was going to say it doesn't really need to, but what do you mean by jump over? Maybe I misunderstand. Uh, so you said it has leftward scope to know what to negate. And uh, I would say in did you not... Isn't it negating the did? Trenger du kvittering? So, or is it negating the you? Did not you? Because you say, did you not? Did you or did you not? So it's, I think it's negating the did. I agree. So how does it know to skip over the U? Well, I wouldn't really fundamentally talk about words knowing to do things. I don't attribute sentience to them as a property. But let me translate okay. what I think you're asking. It's like, how do we, when, we, when we're decoding a thing like this, I don't know. Uh, sometimes you can have discontinuous phrases. German does it all the time, right? It pinches other stuff into the oh. middle of its phrase. And when we, it's, it's just a result of your reordering, apparently, for different sentence types, we get discontinuous phrases in English too. 
And we do it in, not just in like negations and questions, we do it with, it was the greatest fun, let's see, what's an example? Where people will have a complement of an adjective displaced until after the, postponed until after the noun. Oh, he's a harder player than me to beat, right? Where the to beat doesn't really belong as much with the noun me, uh, the pronoun there. Let me put that up so we can absorb it. A harder player. Now, harder is ambiguous. A harder player than me, that would be meaningful. But if I add something like to beat, that shifts the meaning to me. It forces a different reading. What I mean is to beat is this infinitive. It's properly the complement or whatever. It belongs with hard from the phrase hard to beat. A player who is harder to beat than I is my standard English rendering of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. That harder makes to sense. beat than I am hard to beat. So this is a discontinuous phrase in my view. Maybe not. I suppose there's other analyses possible. Trenger du kvittering. Now the trenger. Trenger. You need. Mm -hmm. Seat. Check. Kvittering. Ah, it's indefinite. Vill du ha kvittering? Vill du ha kvittering? Du. Var är pengarna mina? Okay, where are my monies? Pengene. Mm -hmm. Plural, definite, but not in English. Oh, I, you know, do you have? Do you see any cognates for pengene? I think I might have one. And the reason it would also uh, the la uh, pecunia maybe. Oh, that's a good. Oh, I mean, that could be true for what I'm thinking of too. My thought is that it's related to pfennig and penny. Oh, yeah. So I think the basic stem peng. Yeah, akin to penny. Penninger. German has that too, uh, with a nasal final instead of penning of the spelling. But the initial P, German PF, points to alone. The standard German has pfennig, but we often heard the form pfenning where I was. That seemed to be at least as frequent. And so the penny. Oh, oh, this is uh, not Germanic. It's a Germanic word, but we're looking at a Finno Ugric language here. Finnish? Mm -hmm. Hungarian. Yeah, with all these cases. Look at that. And it means there. Very excellent. Very good. And as a noun, blade. Okay. Penning coin. Penningar. Uh, I'll just offer for comparison. Panningas. So with your eng being original. And the g from dissimilation, I guess. Doublet of pfennig. Pandan. The first part is possibly a borrowing of either pan or a piece of cloth. If it's pan with a semantic shift explained as a penny being a coin with a concave form. Or if it's from the word piece of cloth, because cloth was often used as a means of payment. Feniman, an able scholar, suggests another possibility. Following his controversial Punic superstrait theory, that punning may derive from Carthaginian traders' jargon use of Punic. Pun oh, Punic punny face. Not the word Punic, but that's the language. Love the writing. To mean coin, face for coin, as almost all Carthaginian coins depict the face of Tanit, <laughs> goddess. Who was known as the face of Baal. Fenimon further speculates that the variants Panning and Panding preserved the bimoric nature of the Punic word. Panning. Bimoric. Well, any. Okay, we get a little paradigm here. Panningas. Bucket of Panning. Panninga. Panningas, Pandingis. Maybe better Ginga. Panningai, Panningo instrumental. There's our da and a here, although different grade. And Panningos, Panningans, genitive on, nasalized like am. 
paningamas, paningamas, and paning, paningamis. Instead of the bias, we've got m. Endings. Anyway, a nice little side trip there. So that would explain why it could be a plural form. We don't. Well, we do say monies. <laughs> Posen koster two kroner. But not to mean money that we're looking for, trying to collect. Posen koster two kroner. What is posen? Posen. Costs. This is a Latin word. Costir. And so that can be two crowns. Den koster bare åtte kroner. Den will be this. Koster. Bare åtte kroner. Only eight crowns. Den koster kroner. bare åtte kroner. Den koster bare åtte kroner. Bare, like our bear. Meaning just. So what kind of a word is it there? Is it just adverb? Probably. What the bar? Right. I think krone. it's uh, describing what kind of ate. The barely ate or something. Vil du ha en eller to poser? En eller to poser. What is again? What? Oh, bags. Do you want to have an elder toe? One or two bags. Pengene ligger på bordet. Pengene ligger på bordet. That's a plural one, but I guess it means money. So, at one point, pennies or coins and not just money. Pengene ligger på bordet. Det er en dyr restaurant. It is, I think it is a deer, like deer. It is a deer restaurant. Lunchen er gratis. Lunchen er gratis. Lunch, I think, is free. So two nice Oh, wow, we see that in Germanic toya, but also that's in Irish. The word spelled D-A-O-R, deer. D-A-O-R. D. D-A-O-R. Yes. Yeah. From Irish dyr, servile, unfree, surf. Dear high priced. So an accidental sound alike, it seems. With English dear. Lynchen. Den hesten er dyr. Dem? Den or dem? Den hesten er dyr. Okay. Den. Hesten. Hesten. Er dyr. So, oh, look at that. Looks like a double determiner. What's this mean, Levi? Den hesten er dyr. Uh, den hesten er dyr. Hest, hest is a horse. Den, the horses are expensive. Or Looks, the one horse. The, yes, definitely. The horse is expensive. I think den is a pointing word. So this horse or that horse, not sure. That horse. Okay. Er dyr. It looks like it could be, is an animal too, if we think of Tia. Den er helt gratis. Oh, that's spelled it. Den, den er helt gratis. Looks like an adverbial T. And hel, like heil and whole. It is wholly free. Har du noen poser? Noen. Looks like none, but it means any. Do you have any bags? Har du noen poser? Har du noen poser? Noen poser. Kaffen er gratis. The coffee is free. Uh, another one with two long words. Kaffen er gratis. Den hunden er dyr. The dog. So it looks like that same thing Den. happening. It's the original, f well... Is it really the same word twice? This den has a pointing force that the other doesn't. So there you could have your differentiate, mm. your Germanic. Oh, is it Sur? Oh, okay. Yeah, Sirsche. Is, is, there is a name, Freedom. Dude mm. seems not such a great name. But if your den was in front of the noun, then it was more pointy, more didactic. Whereas if your noun had the den attached to it, I think you could do that with Latin, too, although there was really no determiner 
no article like we have here in Germanic, in Latin, it lacked that. The Greek had, I think, freedom of its little play, of little uh, article placement. Den hunden er dyr. Den hunden. Hvor er pengene? Where is the money? Hvor er pengene? Er... En pose. What's the etymology of this N pose? Let's look at For it. a bag. I think it's going to be connected to French push and ultimately from Celtic. Hmm. Not pose, but Norwegian. Look, mole. Posey, Old Norse. Germanic puso. Uncertain has been compared to puko and in European bowswell. All right, so Germanic puso. Look at that double long vowel marking here. Bag, sack, script. But script's not a word I know. This o had an inherent nasal underline, and you can see that in the other case forms. The stem forming suffix here. Like we have in Cicero and Plato, when you added a suffix, you've got the N reappearing. Pusanuns. Look at this. Nice Germanic synonyms in words for bags. Oh. What a time to be alive. En kurv. Kurv. Like kop. Chocolade. Chocolade. En pære. Pære. En kurv. En appelsin. With the head initial compound. En matbutikk. Matbutikk. Hva kjøper du på matbutikken? Ok. So, butikk and... Matbutikken. From loanwords. Hva kjøper du på matbutikken? Sjokolade. En banan. En banan. En kurv. En appelsin. En appelsin. Kind of upstepping tone. Sjokoladen koster 5 kroner. Sjokoladen, the chocolate, cost 5 kroner. En matbutikk. Matbutikk. En appelsin. En appelsin. En banan. Banan. Frukten ligger i kurvene. So that's the fruit singular lies in the baskets. I think fruit used as a collective for many pieces of fruit. The fruit is in the baskets. Hang in the baskets. Katten er tre bananer lang. Do you get a meaning from that? Katten er tre bananer lang. Katten the cat is three bananas long. A lovely sentence. Yeah, exactly. Jeg er en banan. I'm a banana. Uh, jeg er en banan. Det er en matbutikk her. Okay, there is. It's, it is in Norwegian. Es gibt. We say there is. The supermarket. Matbutikk. Hvorfor selger de brune bananer? Hvorfor selger de brune bananer? Seljan. I think it originally just had a palatal y. It looks like it's developed into a stop, which is kind of like salir salgo. If it is that way around. Mm. Selir is related to our word sell. Originally meant give. Verb. Oh. That would make sense because we do know that the Norse languages developed a G out of the Y that was there before. As example, uh, Middle English had A or I or something for egg, and modern German has I, but the Norse form, which English reborrowed in, was egg. Yeah, so they that, there the input was a little different, I think. I believe the underlying structure there was... I don't know if the O was long or short, but it had a, a long Y sound, I believe, in the reconstructed. So that gives a, a double 
I think the word is like, it gives in Gothic a DDJ cluster. Mm. And in North Germanic, dia is the outcome. And that's because it had a gem in it at the older stage. So a little different from here. Selya okay. is Selyanol. And that has hardened into a gist. So maybe there's that development in Spanish, salir, to exit, to leave, go out, salvo, could be due to some Germanic influence. Maybe. Maybe it's just a common thing mm -hmm. to happen, but we can also compare tener and tengo, where the g comes from depalvalization of the nasal. Tiene. Tenye. Mm -hmm. Tiene. According to some. Oh, the, the, uh, there was that one author of the Spanish book I showed you. His name was Penny. Ralph Penny. Yeah. Yeah. That's that word again. Theme word for the day. Jeg kjøper aldri pærer, bare epler. I believe in the UK, the name spelled R-A-L-P-H is actually pronounced Rafe. So, maybe Rafe Penny. Jeg kjøper yes, aldri pærer, so. bare epler. Bare epler. Aldri. Here's what we're looking for. But considering that ikke might be, aldri is the negative determiner. I buy no pears, only apples. So not any sounds better. We sort of break up the negation or just shift it over and the any kind of stays as a trace or a harmonic part. Pears, only apples. And note the umlaut of apple. I hope that's true in the singular too. Is it still umlaut? I never buy. Okay. Wrong there, not a noun determiner, but never. Aldri. Pærene ligger i kurven. Pa Pærene ligger i kurven. The pears, plural definite, are in the basket. Vil du ha den sjokoladen eller denne sjokoladen? Vil du ha den sjokoladen eller denne sjokoladen? Sjokoladen, I already said it. Um, here, this is very instructive, the contrast den, denne, it's kind of interesting. That is the shorter one, mm. this is the length of the which is kind that of... That chocolate weird. or this chocolate? Uh, isn't that how it is in Irish too? Shishin? Shishin means that. What's this? Sha, yeah. a word. Is it shashin? Sha is... Here is. Uh, no. She shin is a thing that is said, but she is just the pronoun, and then it uses the shin, like modifies it. And shin is for oh. that, sho is for this. Shin is that. She shin means? But I don't think you would... What does she shin mean? Like that. Okay. Shin is... But I don't think you would say she sho for this thing. Alright. I think you'd just say sho by itself. Before or after. So, very handsome. Check. Mannen, mannen hennes, not hunds. Han spiser en apelsin. He eats an orange. Denne butikken har grønne kurver. Denne butikken. Grønne. Denne butikken har grønne kurver. Green baskets. Denne butikken har grønne kurver. Hun har et eple og en appelsin. She has an apple and an orange. Hun har et eple og en appelsin. En appelsin er en frukt. An orange is a fruit. En appelsin er en frukt. En. Har dere noen røde pærer? Do you have any red pears? Har dere noen røde pær pærer? Jeg kjøper aldri pærer, bare epler. Never buy pears, only, only apples. Her husband, mannen, noun first, definite. Hennes, possessor, like a second determiner, following. Or is it an adjective? What is hennes? What word class? Er valig, veldig, veldig. 
Chic. Oh, chic, maybe chic. Maybe an approximation of the French. Or just a look alike. Kek and Kvicker. We've looked this up before, it seems. Et shirt. Shirt. En kunde. En dress. Kunde for woman. Is that right? Et shirt. Dress for a suit. Et shirt. En dress. En kjole er ikke en dress. Kjole was. A dress is not. <laughs> a dress is not a dress. Oh, we do keep the DR cluster. Oh, it's the other way around. Never mind. DR is preserved, but RD gets simplified, I think. Maybe it depends on which side of stress it's on. But it's a uh, dress is not a suit. False friend there. Customer, right. That's like the German Kunde. Oh, you know what verb Kunde is related to? Kunde means customer. Mm. German as well as Norwegian. Kunde. En kunde. Kunde. No, the ND cluster is preserved. What verb do you think that... It comes from a verb root. Which one do you expect that is? And what's the English mm. cognate? Vi har mange nye kunder. Mm. Har han en dress? Same initial, at least. Uh, yeah. En dress. Does he have a suit? Har han en dress? Our customer is from Latin. Yes. Ser jeg bra ut i denne? Konsuetudinem. Konsuetudo. Ser jeg... I don't know the verb. That's not for kunde. It's from kunnen. Or kennen, rather. That's from kennen. Someone known. A known person. Is my guess there. Okay. Kunnen, kennen being, of course, in the same family. What would be the English cognate of Kunde? The same form there. Uh, kunde Kundu. West German Kundu. Yes. Kutha was Old English. Kundu. Acquaintance friend. Yeah, a known one. Tomo. The Tomo of Tomodachi means to know. So, same root idea there. Kunde came to, from an original word for friend came to mean customer. How oh, nice. A little different thing. So if you know that it was kutha in Old English, what would that give? Kutha. Is this a modern be, word? It would be kutha. Uh, what would you say? Oh. Kuth. Kuth, yeah. Kuth and uncouth. Kuth, dit. I feel like uncouth is more common. Probably. That's my cool. that's my impression too. Isn't that nice? Kunde. Ken kun. So the original sense of kunen was knowing how. And we also get from that word kunst when it gets the the sense, uh, right, the sense of a special ability. A Künstler, Kunst is that which takes special talent, special ability to produce. Oh, question. Ut bra. How come Kuth did not great vowel shift to Al, right? Kuth right. to Hal. That does seem to be exceptional. But Kuth doesn't become Kal. We'd normally expect that, wouldn't we? Good. Good eye. Kuthling. Kunan. Let's just go to Kuth, I guess. We'll have to enter that. Expect a link. Maybe they're just cognates. Yeah, this is Kuth, not... Okay, that Kuth. Familiar, intimate. Kunthas. Maybe it tells us about development here. Ultimately from Gnich to know. Doesn't tell us about the sense development. Might have to do with that. Be the K. Don't know. Do I look good in 
this was the closest. Was the longer form denne means this. Well, look at this. Ser jag bra ut i denne? Frakken kostar 900 kronor. Frakken is okay. The walk is related and frak. Frakken. Coat here. The coat costs. What do you think, Levi? 900 kronor. How much is that? Uh, 900. I agree. De pärarna ser gode ut. De. De. Pärarna. Pärarna. Ser. Gode. Gode. Så so, oh, it's deleted there too. Ut. De pärarna ser gode ut. Ser gode ut. De pärarna ser gode ut. Vi väntar vid klädesbutiken. I think if you had a neuter noun, gut, G-O-D-T, you'd hear the dental there. Vi venter, venter, vi, klesbutikken. Venter. Waiting. Hmm. With or by the fleece. Uh-huh. Did you start? Oh, I noticed another. Yeah, I just was kind of reading the sentence. I did notice another word that's similar to an Irish word. Kunden vill ha ett rött skärf. Mention here or just happens to work? Yes, the it was in a previous sentence, uh, but the Irish word bra means like good or. Oh, okay. B-R-E-G-H. It's slightly better than gamai. Yeah, B R E A. E A G H. No, just like that. E-A. I put it. Gabra. There's no G H. It's just B. I put it in the chat. B R E A. Bregda. There used to be T H or C H. Oh no, there's still this is this the modern inflection still. Fine, excellent. Yeah. The obsolete spelling with a G H. Aonas the Bra. Kun we ha a rot sherf. Kunden will ha et rot sherf. Sherf. The customer wants to have a red scarf. Sherf. Kjolen hennes ser forferdelig ut. Kjolen. That is her. The dress of hers, hennes, ser forferdelig ut. Kjolen hennes ser forferdelig ut. Forferdelig ut. It looks something. Ser ut. Do you know the German equivalent there? What's the meaning of this sentence? That it looks so and so. Looks good, looks expensive. See it ut. In the channel. Uh, yeah, aus sehen. Genau. Sieht aus, aus sehen. Schulen hennes sehr vorferdelig ut. Looks terrible. Oh, maybe the root of fear in there? Schörte kostet 400 kroner. Shirte, silent there at the end. Koster 400 kroner. Shirt. So neuter noun. Costs. And this cost. Cost. Co, yeah, costar, I guess, in vulgar Latin. This verb comes from a Latin compound. To stand firm at a price. Costs 400. Well, that's just lost its final hundred. Kroner. Kroner. 800 kroner for a scarf. 800 kroner for a scarf. 100. 800 kroner for a scarf. 800. 100. Hvor dan ser jeg ut i denne kjolen? Ser jeg ut i denne kjolen? Vodan, how? Vodan. Okay, uh, speaking of this word, Auszin, we used to have these t shirts um, for a German club, and it said, Sehr ich in diesem t shirt Deutsch aus. Cute. <laughs> Mannen köper en orange dress. Mannen köper en orange dress. Dress. Liker du den klesbutikken? 
Cleus. So interesting. Why do we get Claire versus Cleus for clothes? What's going on there? Hmm. What was the question? Well, what we the have, clothes were? We had the word Claire before. Clad, rather, meaning clothes. But in the word clothing store, oh. Cleus. Uh, I have a guess. Okay. Oh, great. Maybe. Uh, uh, I'm guessing this one uh, was intervocalic at some point. It would be like Clare with like an E on the end or something. And then that deleted, but in the compound. Okay, I'm, I'm lost already. What? Shielded. Uh, this, I'm get, I'm positing there what maybe was some sort of final vowel. But when you say so this. so this R was in. Okay, what's this? Okay, start again. New sentence. Uh, so, in the word for clothing, there is an R. I'm postulating that R may have been intervocalic at some stage. But in the word clothing store, it was effectively shielded from being intervocalic and therefore did not rhoticize. Okay. Very nice. Clyde. Clyde. Note that in Icelandic, the written ash is pronounced i as a diphthong. Clyde. Uh -huh, a lot of sound alikes there too. Clyvir. Clydum. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's plural. That's not the comparison. Definite. Clyde. Clydinum. Uh huh. Clivis, Clivisins. There is an S. Yeah, so it looks like you've got rhoticism happening. Loss of the ETH also in Norwegian. Clive, but we want to see. Clias, but it could also be borrowed from a different Germanic language. Oh, or alternate hypothesis. Uh -huh. We saw in the genitive there was an S, so the. Uh, it was. What Clivis would be? Clea. Clivis in the. Let's see, genitive, yes, good. Clivis, exactly right. Clivis. Could be, and this may. It looks here like it's a difference between Bukmol and Nynorsk, the two forms, of this two, two, the two standardized forms of Norwegian. Clea. From this one, Clede. No, the spelling is Cle. Yeah, K L A D E, but the D is dropped in this form. Cle, and then you'd get either so maybe the genitive marker, or maybe just a little bit of glue in a compound, like we had in German. What was our example for the S? Yeah. Geburtstag. Geburtstag. Yeah. Die Geburt, der Geburtstag. Either one. Det er mange kunder i klesbutikken. Kunder i klesbutikken. There are many customers. Mange. Det er mange kunder i klesbutikken. So our word many looks like an old money. Whereas mange looks like the I and the G traded places. No, hard to know which is old. Mange, mange. Oh, menge would be from there too, the amount. Mange kunder i klesbutikken. Det er mange kunder i klesbutikken. Hun har det gule skjørtet. She has a, she has that yellow skirt. Hun har det gule skjørtet. Skjørtet. Skjørtet, it should be, not T. Denne klesbutikken er for barn. Er for barn. Denne klesbutikken er for barn. Har han en dress? Does she have? Has she? En dress. Har han en dress? Hvordan ser jeg ut i denne kjolen? How do I look in this dress? Nope, suit. 
Mm, so I'll say what? Uh, suit, not dress. No, you're thinking of uh, this word means dress. Okay. You're thinking okay. of the word spelled like this. Oh, means suit. Dress. Yes, I was two sentences behind on the. Oh, indeed. Yeah, I saw when you had a sentence that was. Excellent. So. The other one. Keeping with today's theme of not too, not too difficult, not too taxing. Let's do a bit of check. Were you about to say something? Uh, we can do a Sanskrit, or we can even read from the book if you want. We don't have to make it right. super easy. That was just what I felt like in the moment. First, we, all right. Well, I feel like some check uh, either way. Okay. There we go. I'm sure it'll have its subtlety too. Or, although it looks much more straightforward, at least in these early stages, than Russian and Ukrainian do. So that's nice. Let's do a bit of to be. There's this beautiful silent J. <laughs> On Yehesky. Maybe I've joked about this before. It reminds me of J and silent Bob. Here we've got silent J. In the, do you remember the copula forms in Czech? Onyeheski. Uh, here's one. Onyeheski. Hesky. Nice, handsome. Husky Hesky. <sighs> Don't do this to oh, me. Oh, since this chapter is called To Be, and the little symbol was this skull on the little icon, oh, I just now got that. A little Hamlet illusion, how nice, yeah. Yeah. Word is new. Ooh, boy. Slovo. To slovo? To. Slovo, yeah. Nove. 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 Nice and open that bell there. Nove. Nove. So, yeah is a copula. Third singular present. The word is new. So, to means the? Yes. Directly from Indo European. To. Matches the Greek. I would guess. Yes, because the. Ancestor was Todd. That gives the Sanskrit. That's the directest path. Maybe it's a little more twisted than that, but it's nothing surprising that it would look like that Greek word. Unchanged inheritance from a few millennia before. Oh no. What's the English cognate? Uh, I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Take it that. Out. Yes, exactly. This one. The, that, that, that. Katagina. So, ona, yeah. Ona, yeah. Katagina. Katagina. And was to, uh, what's and? Ah. Ah. On, yeah. On, yeah. Matyai. 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 Hmm. On, yeah, Matyai. He is Matyai. That is it. Okay. To, ye. Hmm. Ona. To, to ye. Ona. 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 Oh, for neuter. Ona je Katerina a on je Matyai. Ona je Katerina a on je Matyai. And he is Matyai. That's it. To, to, je ono. Je ono. To je ono. To, je ono. Ano, to je ono. To, to, je, je ona. Yes, that's it. Oopsie, not that issue. Ano. Je to jiné slovo. To, jiné. Wait, so the jiné. pronouns are the same as Russian. Slovo. Very close. Je to jiné slovo. Jiné slovo. Yeah, it is the something word. New. No. Je to jiné slovo. Different. To slovo je nové. To slovo je nové. To je špatné slovo. To je špatně. Špatné. Ne, slovo. Slovo. It is špatné word. A bad word. That is a bad word. To. On je hezký. He. Is handsome. Ano, 
To je ono. Ano, to, to je, je ono. ono. That is it. Cool. Nice and fun. Yeah, I think the only difference between the pronouns here in Czech versus in Russian is that in Russian the in in the middle is shaped like an H. Study old, yeah. So how does it come to be that in Indo-European likely the adjective endings and the Noun endings matched if they were in, if the words were in the same inflection class, but you see systematically different endings here in Czech. Hold on, stare. Stare. Vino. Stare. Vino. Vino. Why is it not staro vino? Špatné vino. There again. Špatné vino. Bad one. Yes, please. Bad child. Okay. Dítě. Sta Staré. Not old. Špatné. Špatné. Dítě. Dítě. Staré víno. Víno. Old one. Any guesses? Any thoughts? I mean, I, sure, I certainly don't know. Uh, could be. Uh, Špatné. Maybe there was an ending that matched at some point that Spatné has... Stare, those all have stress on them. They do. So maybe well, it was like Spatneo or something? It's, no, it's not stress. That's, that shows a long vowel. The Q. Okay. If you listen... It's long. It's... Maybe there was like an O on the end that got deleted and made the E long. So you think maybe an older nail, but why then did the... I mean, then it's still different from the noun. So neo, you're saying neo from the for the adjective ending, if I understand right, right? But then why wasn't it the same? This ending? right. Oh. I mean, it could be. Well, huh? having the O. So, maybe it had an O on the end. What did? Heska I understand the O part, but I don't say maybe maybe that had an O. When you, what do you mean? Um, maybe the verb spotne had an O so yes. that it would match the noun, and then the O went away, because the noun had to do with O. Not a verb, though. Never mind. Okay. Heske dike. Heske dike. Pretty child. Heske. Stare miesto. Stare miesto. Stare is old city. The wine. The vino. Well, think about how in German you also had originally nouns and adjectives that agreed, but adjectives carry different endings from nouns now in modern German. Mm. Nove dice. Nove dice. And these look more alike. This dice is it singular or plural? Oh, we don't need articles. I'll just gotta say new child. Nove dite. So not just a singular neuter ending. More complex than that. Bad is spatne dite. Sh spatne dia di. Is long dite and the t with the prefalical as this hot check. Spatne dite. Old wine is stare. Vino. Vino. Let's see how feminine goes. Yina mada holka. Mada. Holka girl. Yina a different. Mlada. Another young girl. Hmm. Mlada. Bad thing. Spatna. Yes. 
Špatná věc. Špatná věc. Hezká věc. Pretty thing. Good thing. Nice thing. <laughs> Not good thing, you idiot. It means nice thing. Bad street. Špatná. Špatná. Well, nice and good do have Ulice. different meanings. They do, but what's the difference? Jiná žena. When we're not given any other context. Jiná žena. Jiná. Yeah, the different one. A different woman. It's a nice žena word. Different woman. So this one I know from other languages that it had an, a long a at the end. Gune. Well, maybe it length in Greek though, but the, the basic a. Uh, well, no, this one is not originally feminine. It's a good one, good one to look at. Not a good one to look at. Blah. Nice thing. Okay, what's nice? Hezká věc. Stará žena. Stará. Stará. Žena. Old woman. And again, long for the adjective, short on the noun. Špatná žena. The general theme. Špatná ulice. Špatná bad street. Ulice. Špatná ulice. Stará věc. Stará věc. Stará ulice. Stará ulice. Stará ulice. Jiná ulice. Jiná ulice. Another street. Hezká věc. Věc. Hezká. Nice thing. Is it good or nice? Oh. Hezka. Which one? Hezka is nice. Very good. Hezka, hezka. Do you remember the word for good? Dobre. Dobra. Starý člověk. Starý člověk. Here we go. Man. Person or man? Človek. Person man. Okay, don't tell me I'm getting it wrong. Old man or old person. Človek. Different. Jiný. Jiný. Stroj. Stroj. Hmm. You destroy the machine. I wonder if it's from struire, the Latin word for build. Stroj. Oh yeah, it also looks like an Esperanto plural. Huh. Starý strom. Starý strom. Tree, I think. Old tree. Young tree. No. Oh, mladý. Mladý. Strom. strom. Oh, the proto-Slavic form is unclick onable. You can't click on it, but it's just not going to take you anywhere. A dead link. Velký stroj. Velký. Velk stroj. Stroj was machine. This one means. Velký. Large. Hm. Young man. Mladý. Mladý. Muž. 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 Jiný muž. Jiný muž. Jiný muž. muž. Mladý muž. Mladý, young man. Jiný člověk. Jiný člověk. Jiný člověk. Different person. Starý stroj. Starý stroj. Old machine. Good machine. Was it dobr dobrý, right? Yep. Dobrý stroj. Different man. Yini muj. Yini. Leisure. Ian Ball. En hage. Hage. Hmm. Hecke, we have in German. Et spill. Lazurae. 
Indeed. It's Spiel. Nice and short. There. Spielen. Spiel. Ein Ball. Ein Ball. Ball. Ein Ball. Gutten leker med ballen. Gutten is the boy. Singular. Leker med ballen. <laughs> Plays with the ball. En hage. If we're learning bokmål, how different is nynorsk? I do not know. The only difference is the one we just saw. We looked at clear. I think this one is nynorsk. Mm -hmm. So, the only difference I'm aware of now is that the klaivi word became clear here versus klare, which is not insignificant. Clad, rather. Clad in the literary style, clear in the spoken style. Hun vinner. Hun vinner. Wins? Vinner. She wins. Sins. Søsteren min vinner. Søsteren. My sister. Søsteren min vinner. Okay, and the possessor postponed. Sister mine. Dere har en fargerik hage. Dere har en fargerik hage. Dere is you. It looks like a German third plural. You have a colorful sand garden. Hage. Hedge. Oh, hedge and hecke are the cognates, I think. Hvor mange gitarer har du nå? Hvor mange gitarer har du nå? How many? Same word. Or... Guitars. Do you have now? Have you now? Okay, not quite. Do you have now? Vem vinner? Who wins? Vem vinner? Hva spiller dere? What are you playing? De spiller ball. De spiller ball. They are playing ball. Ballen er rød og blå. Ballen er rød og blå. The ball is red and blue. Ballen er rød og blå. Jeg spiller gitar i spillet. What does this mean? Jeg spiller gitar i spille. If you're there, I cannot hear you. Spiller du gitar? Spiller du gitar? Hun er ute i hagen. She is out in the garden. Vi spiller et spill. We play the game. Vi spiller et spill. Broren min spiller gitar. Broren min spiller gitar. Hvem vinner spillet? Who wins the game? Who's win? Hvem vinner spillet? You have. Du har a colorful garden in fargerik. Hage. Hage. Gage. Hage. It is a nice garden. Det er en brå, fin hage. Oh, are we on a new... I guess I would have told us there. Yeah, leisure. En hage. En fotball. Fotball. En park. En fotball. Fotball. Jeg går gjennom parken. Go toward the park, I think. Or I walk. Gjennom. Gjennom. Through. Disse bilene er fantastiske. Okay, this must be the closer one, this car, and it's a neuter, so we get the S instead of the N. Disse bilene. It's plural, these cars. That's what it is. And cars mark definite. Plural. These cars. Er fantastiske. Are fantastic. Du vinner og jeg taper. Du vinner og jeg taper. You are winning. And I, so I'm losing. Taper. De taper aldri. They never lose. De taper aldri. Barna leter etter fotballen sin. 
Letter. Is that a going word? Letter. Looking. Hmm. The children look after their soccer balls. Children and the child are looking for their football. Detta är inte en sport. Detta är inte en sport with that retroflection. RT. Sport. Using it a single consonant. Detta means this is not a sport. Ikka. Pointing right or negating rightward there. Jag taper aldrig. Jag taper aldrig. I never lose. Jag taper aldrig. Jenta synger för katten sin. Jenta, the girl, sings for her cat. Mannen synger utanför kaféen. Mannen synger. Mannen synger utanför kaféen. Utanför. Kaféen. Okej, okay, kaféen. Single F. Mannen synger. Synger SY. Mannen synger utanför kaféen. Utanför. Kaféen. Barna spelar fotboll i parken. The children play football. In the park. Denna lekeplatsen är fantastisk. This playground is fantastic. Denne oh, we should look at that. Um... Är fantastisk. What's that? We should look at that. Um... Liker du sport? Again, the, the Hunmin Jong-um, the, with the Japanese translation. Okay. Let me finish this round, and then we'll turn to that. Liker okay. du sport? Du... Sport? Nei, vi taper ikke ofte. Nei, vi taper ikke ofte. Ha en fantastisk dag. No ending there. Thank you. Okay. No, yeah, no argument or ending. Vi synger. Vi synger. Det är ett spel, inte en sport. Det är ett spel, inte en sport. En. Fotboll är en sport. Fotboll är en sport. En and synger inte. Duck doesn't sing. En and synger inte. Mm -hmm. Mannen synger utanför kaféen. Men synger. Utan för kaffe accenten is the ending outside of the cafe. All right, and let me go. I hear someone meowing. Tend to that real quick while we hear the sutras. Okay. And then we can turn to the Hunmin. Be right back. Om. Yenaksharasamam Yakaranam Proktam Tasmaibani Nayena Maha Yena Dhota Girafum Sam Bimalay Shabdavari Behe Tamaschajana Jambinam Tasmaibani Nayena Maha Vakyakaram Vararuchim Bhashyakaram Patanjalim Pani nim sutra karanja pranatos mi munitrayam. Om. Ayuna rudraka evom. Ayavuj hayavarata lana nyamangana nama jabhaya ghadhadhasha jabhagadhasha. Kapa chata ta chatatavo kapaya shashasara hala iti maheshwarani sutrani. Okie doke. So, what would you like to look at in particular on here? If you're there. Well, we, um, I think we did the molar sounds, the molar sounds. velar. The velars. So, I think first. next we need to look at the. Alveolar. 
And when you say look at, what specifically? Uh, well, what did we do last time when we reviewed these handful of sounds that were phonetic? Right, so we've got do, tan, and tun for this. True enough. You have that in your spreadsheet there? Yes, I have it. What's the title of that? Just Hunmin? Shit. There it is. Good though. There we go. And time. Right. So not, there we go. Opinion monitor is good. And let's just put them on different lines to make it even easier. And I'm gonna move this a little closer. Give our eyes a treat. And the gyu gyu rhymes up line, lines up rather with chiu in this one, the very first set of examples quai and initial n giving zero in the velars and now here so look at the outcome voiceless t is this a sound change when it when we've got a, a d in the rightmost column uh, oh i guess not right because this is just this d is really telling us unaspirated and a central diphthong going to U is what we have in both the Chinese forms. So essentially the same sound. My goodness, why does that jump like that? Not feeling that. Okay, and now how about the second example word for the voiced value of Tigut? The reading now is Tan, uh -huh. and that comes from Dum. Is that a sound? So that word? one does represent a change. Yes, it does. What kind it of change? It became aspirated. That's right. And it was not before. For the aspirate tiet, tun, as given tun, so a different spelling. Is that a sound change? No, it is not. Yeah, only apparently so. However, what is new is the u, the labial glide, coloring the vowel. So this one in the middle here, this next one would have been something like na, with the falling tone, I think. Okay. Supply that. It, okay, Wiktionary didn't list a form for this uh -huh. one, so that's why I didn't put anything. That is prudent. Better to not, to not just make up your own. I am going to make one up here, so I'm marking it differently. Instead of slashes, putting it in brackets and adding a star. Not attested directly. Anything else you want to say or ask or discuss on the dentals? You wanna, you, why don't you read that passage for us from Hudi, from the letter names? the descriptions. Okay. I think on the document you should uh, look, look, refresh yourself. Tigut she in ru dou zi chu hua shang. Ding. Ding. Shu ru tan zi chu hua shang. Very nice. No feedback there. Keep going. What is the aspirated tigut called? Tigut. I'll put it in RR there in the chat. So it's that same Tiyut. good syllable written, of course, with this aspirate letter, but this one doesn't have a velar stop on it. Tigut was apparently available. Oddly. Tigut. Uh, in ru tun. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds good to me there. Zetsu on de no ji no hajime ni hasuru on to onaji de aru. Note the stacking no phrases here. 
トンの字の始め。Oh, I guess I did have one question about、okay. the velars.、Uh, the velars or... Or, or the dentals. Okay. This、uh, sh, which describes. Oh, we discussed that before. That's the tongue. The tongue. These are tongue tip sounds. sounds yep.、Yeah. Sure. Okay. So、then on to the chun in. Sounds good. Right? Yep, they're on screen. Okay. Chun in, ru, ye, su, chu, fa, shun, bing, bing, shu, ru, bu, su, chu, fa, shun, ye, chun in, ru, Oh, right. It is, no, we did look that up because the mod, you had piao in first tone, and that is, I think, the one intended, but the more common reading for modern Chinese has a falling tone, but that's for a different word. Piao is what we should use here, I think. Piao. Piao. Mium chun in, ru mi, zi chu fa shang. Mi zi chu fa shang. Let's see. Mium wa. Jin on maybe? Don't know the reading. De. Mi or bi no ji no hajime ni ha suru oto to onaji de aru. Something to a gendai no gengo gaku de iu tokoro no ryo lip on ni ataru is called the two lip sound bilabial. Maybe we can get a reading for this. I go to Jisho, probably not. Oh, how nice. Ryo shin on bilabial. Okay, very thorough coverage. Ryo shin on. Ryo shin also means parents. Different shin though. To goku se in shiki kanji on de. Ibu piao mi no oto wa oto wa sore zore. Um, oh, this is a tofu. Pong something min de aru. Oh, oh, this is the zero. This is middle Korean writing. So something like bel probably. Then po for the step, and then probably a pyo or byo for the third one, and then mi. Not ming, but mi for this one. Okay, should we go to the palettes? Let's look at chiot, chiot, chigut. Do you know this one's name?、Uh. This one? The first part. Oh, should I call is it? It wouldn't be c h i u c h would it? You wouldn't pronounce it with an affricate at, in the coda. c h i u t There we go. It would be a T sound, but of、yeah. course the same letter. c h i u t is the name. c h i u t Oh, because this, just like the c h i u t becomes a T in the、mm -hmm. coda. Anything other than a velar or a labial or a nasal. Okay. Chi chi in ru chi zi chu fa sheng. Chu ru zi ru zi zi chu fa sheng. Ah, close, but what's the reading for the character word? Uh, zi. 字词字 the character 词 meaning like love toward children is what this one means. 词 In fact, I think these two words there's an etymological connection. The 字 originally meant like raise or nourish a child, and this one means affection for a child. 词字 but that's just an accent. Here's talking about that sound of that particular word. Okay. Mm. 
。おう、アークタウン。スーツースーツースーツーツーツーツーツーツーツー Let us turn here and examine the correspondences for the labials PAE and B. So, the first one written P here, written B. Is that a sound change? From Middle Chinese P to modern B. Are you there?、Mm -hmm. Okay. What about it? Is this a sound change? Still no. Okay. If you said no already, I didn't hear you there. Oh, I said it when we dealt with the alveolars. Yes, but this is a different correspondence, isn't it? For those of us, for those watching, let's be very explicit. Oh, I suppose so, but it falls into the same class of things that were, are written with a P in the middle Chinese form and then are represented with what seems to be the voice letter, but really is indicating an aspirated, so it's not a change. How about the word step here? Bua to bo. Same letter? Is it a sound change? Yeah, it lost the O. I mean the initial word. Oh, the initial no. So, b. Well, now you're contradicting yourself. You What? Were just, you were just saying that this P on the left equals this B on the right. So, how can it、yeah. be? Yeah. How can this not be a sound change then? So, this B on the. So, two things give one output. Right, but if they're the same here, does that mean that these had the same initial sound? The ones no, that... they didn't. They have merged. <laughs> Do you see the contradiction? If A and B are not the same,、uh -huh. but C is the same as A, then can C also be the same as B? So they were different before, but in modern, they're the same. They have merged. Okay. So Two distinct things became both are. All right. Good. Unless I'm wrong. No, Am no, I wrong? That, that part, I think you are absolutely correct. But then the next step is from, and step indeed, this, that's what the character means. It's the word for step or to step. Is,、okay. is it, when we go from this B to this B, is that a sound change? Uh, yes, it is because the first B was voiced. Exactly. And the second B is just unaspirated. That is correct. There is a phonological restructuring that happened. Meaning it looks the same, but that's misleading. Different values for these letters.、Okay. So the aspirate one, Piao, was an old Piao. P H to P. It's just a respelling. No difference, really. And M to M, same thing. Far as we can tell.、Mm -hmm. And then we were on the dentals. Z gave G, and Z gave Z. And let's put those on separate rows for clarity. So, what's going on? From Z to Z. Oh, wow. Now we seem to have the first one, not a sound change, right? We just are writing unaspirated by using the J. But well, the second one is a sound change. We went from voiced to、on. aspirated. Hold on. What is the pronunciation of the Mandarin J? G. It's an affricate. G, unaspirated affricate. What's its place of, of articulation?、Uh, palatal. Okay, and what do we have on the left?、Uh, oh, an unpalatalized one, but also palatalized. Good point. What is an unpalatal, please? A dental. Right, what do we have in Korean? A palatalized one. T U R. Okay, and how about from D Z? On the left to C on the right. 
it has gone from voiced to aspirated. That's and it has also palatalized. It was also originally not palatalized. Really? Hmm? Why do you say that? Wait. Oh, C is not in the same row as... Uh, it's not in the palatal row. That's just a regular S sound. So disregard my claim Indeed. about palatalization, it please. Is, it is not, yeah. Okay, and then Tim, Tim giving Chin, what's happening? Uh, just palatalized, state aspirated. Okay, all right, let's look at the next chunk. Oh, we read this bit. Can you read it for the Chiot, I guess would be the name of this one. No, no, how is it pronounced? Two. It sounds like you're saying two. Can you be nice and firm in the mic there? Two. Two. It's not the right vowel. What does XU denote? Oh, yeah. It's the, uh, I forgot, it's the pow, the, um, the E vowel. There we go. Xu. Xu. That's right. Okay, Ru Xu Zi Chu Fa Sheng Bing Shu Ru Xie Zi Xie Zi Chu Fa Sheng. So let's go through this set and then we'll switch back. So we'll actually be the first three there for Xu Xiot. Xu, this is correct. X U. What's the change that's taking place from S to X? Um, palatal. Pretty much, that's about it. And note how the input there has S followed by E, so a good candidate to palatalize. And then from mm -hmm. Xia to Xie, what's going on here? Hello? Uh, yes. What's going on with Z to X? Oh, I thought you were reading the chat because the most amazing, oh, amazing eat. What is going most on? Most amazing this? YT is saying what's going on. Indeed, I did not. So, so we were just looking at some ancient Korean from the 1400s and the resultant Chinese. But we're about uh, to and go soon, back. yeah, we're fixing to go back to Duolingo. Let's just talk about ZIA. Let's wrap it up. That's the very last one for this group. Yeah. What's the yeah. sound change? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it palatalizes, and I think it also devoices. I agree. X is not a voice sound. Okay. Mm -hmm. Most amazing YT YouTube, Young Turk. I wonder. We're going to do some more Norwegian. En radio. Musik. Et piano. So, neuter. Now for that instrument. En radio. Radio. Musik. Musik. Mamma er på radio. Er på radio. Mamma. Uh, uh, radio. We need the word the. We don't say on radio. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. Radio. Et piano. 
et piano. Dette er sangen din. Dette. So the closer one this is sangen din, your bed. Song. Sang is bed. Unnskyld, hva heter denne sangen? Unnskyld, hva heter denne sangen? Unnskyld, hva heter denne sangen? What's the name of this song? Broren hennes spiller gitar i et band. Brother plays guitar in the band. Jeg synger i et stort kor. Synger, jeg synger i et stort kor. I Oh, do we have... Stort. Do we have an English cognate to this? Spillen, and like spielen in German. Maybe spell. Mm. Spille. Spellen. Middle low German. Spiele. Middle low German. Uh-huh. Spillon, maybe to spill also. Spill game and on the form of verb, play, dance, move. Old English spillin' spiel, apparently. <laughs> Whatever that is. There is a word, but it's not part of my language. Jeg synger i et stort kor. Dette er ikke mitt piano. Mitt is mine. Dette er ikke mitt piano. Musikken kommer fra det rommet. The music is coming from the room. That room. Det rommet. Oh, it would just be rommet if it was the room. Koret mitt synger sanger fra radioen. Mitt synger. Koret mitt synger. Åh, oh, mitt. My choir synger sanger fra radioen. Sing songs. Radio. Oh wow, we have an O and an E next to each other here. Radio. Radio. I don't think the E is really sounded. Kore mitt synger sanger fra radioen. Radioen. Dette kore er fantastisk. Dette kore er fantastisk. Hvorfor står det et piano i hagen? Hagen. Det er... Okay, stands that a, pia a piano in the yard means why is there? The garden. Mm. Sister means sister. Sister means. Sister mean. Vasker. Vasker. Hennes washing her new car. Vasker bilen, bilen sin. sin. Car the of hers. Oops, her new car. Den, den nye bilen sin. Det er to kvinner og tre menn i bandet. Er, er to kvinner og tre menn i Anne. koret bandet. Det er to kvinner og tre menn i bandet. Tre menn i bandet. Vi hører musikk fra parken. We hear music from the park. Jeg spiller, Jeg spiller gitar, ikke piano. I play guitar, not piano. Jeg spiller gitar, ikke piano. Liker du dette bandet? You like this band. Liker du dette bandet? Bandet spiller musikk i parken. I think they're approximating the English ash vowel here. Bandet spiller musikk i parken. Radioen spiller en sang. The radio plays a song. Radioen spiller en sang. Mamma synger i det koret. Mom sings in that choir. Mamma synger i det koret. Dette er sangen din. What's this? It's your bed. How oh, interesting. Denne, dette. Maybe there is. Dette. Oh, I have a question about the English word choir. Okay. 
It seems to be spelled as though it's spelled in French. It would be schwar. Schwar. Why do you think it's spelled that way? Is that a French word? Huh. From Old French, queer chorus. Yes, came from French. Hmm. Choir. Brun hennes spille guitar i et band. Brother plays. I et band. In a band. Musikken kommer fra det rommet. Søsteren min vasker den nye bilen sin. Wow, så tre sånne kandidater for den determiner. Den, og den suffix variant n here on the noun and then sin also uh, could potentially be determined the new year being what is in. this yeah new year new year can you get it new year oh there's just the adjective new yeah new the that that song in din that that song in din that is your song that this is your song <laughs> All right, I'm going to do one more Esperanto. My eyes are getting a little sleepy. And then okay. end the stream there. Your time be in. Places. Ni voyages norden por visiti Canadon. Ni is we. Voyages future. We will... Oh, no, it's past. We traveled north. Norden. Okay, a new sort of ending, potentially. Northward. We traveled north. Por, in order to... Visiti Canadon. Dum vintro, multai canadanoi voyages suden. Canadanoi voyages suden. How cool. During winter, multai canadoi travel voyage just not towel <laughs> travel south so english just an unmarked noun there se mi havus tempon if i have time mi irus i would go suden it seems ni ne povis decidi do ni iris nenien all right a little I don't know about the second half but it's we weren't able to decide what is do that we didn't go anywhere maybe so that's interesting we couldn't decide so we didn't go we went nowhere nice nenien okay with that same n directional ending maybe an allative or something norden suden nenien Kio estas la chef urbo de Rusio? Chef urbo. Oh, chef urbo. What a cool compound. What? Kio estas is the capital of Russia. Chef. Urbo. Oh, the chief. Yep. Is our English form of this word, right? Chief, chef. We also have it in kerchief. Yeah. Jefe. Kerchief is a pickpocket noun, means coverhead. Kiu consilis a la juna virino ke si iru occidenten? Kiu consilis a la juna virino? Consilis would be like, give advice. Who advised? Ke si iru, that she would go westward. Who oh, that's advised? cool. So north and south use the Germanic, and it uh, looks like east and west use the Latinate. Well, have we seen East yet? But yeah, look, definitely the one for West. Good, good point. Who advised the young woman to go? That she go. Nice. Subjunctive in English. Kishi iru. Iru. 
Ŝi. La nordaj landoj de Azio estas malvarmaj dum vintro. Asian and also the noun, a person from Asia. I don't know. Asiatish. And then the Asiat, the Asiatin. Not too much else like that. There might not be any other ones. So what would you call the augment to form these mm. derivatives? Uh. Well, that's interesting, right? Because it kind of gets rid of the in mm -hmm. here before adding this at. Unlike Italian, Italianish, it keeps that in. What else? What other mm -hmm. country names end in the I E N? Italian. Spanian. Yeah, good. That one is different, right? Not e not Spanianish, <laughs> but Spanish. And that one gets mm -hmm. truncated too. Spanien, very good. Spanish. But it doesn't get the at. Exactly. At is the, the bit that's inserted, so I would call this little augment atuk. The u is just a bit of glue to make it pronounceable. We don't need a dash because the k tell us where it goes when it's added. Okay. And then another question for an for an analyst is, what do you make of Italianish? Does that have an augment, or does it just not truncate? It's the morpheme boundaries there. La norda landoi de Azio estas malvarmai dum vintro. Northern, nordai, that's cool. Countries, landoi of Asia. Estas are... Cold it during winter. The winter. La chef urbo de mia lando situas ce la occidenta marbordo. Situas ce. Is that by? At. Um, ce la occidenta marbordo. Love it. Marbordo is the coast. Uh huh. The seaboard. Capital of my country, mm. Yolando, is located che at. Situated on the eastern seaboard. Not eastern, though. No. Occidenta. Those western. Were... Yeah, western. Occident is from a Latin compound noun. Can you identify it? And orient, not a compound, but also a verbal participle. Occident. No. The it has the int, which makes something into, like, student. Okay, what's the end? Yeah, tell me what the pieces are, what they do. I don't know. Could this be the same thing that's in decide and all those? Yes. Well, there's a few roots that coincide as a SID when they're reduced. But what's the prefix? Uh, I don't you... know. What other words do you know starting with X? O -C -C? Maybe? No, that one won't change its vowel. It's not X. Uh, uh? La cefurbo de Usono estas apud la orienta marbordo. If you had another guess, I didn't hear it because the audio was playing. Oh, I was going through the SID space prepositions. SID it's one of them. Uh, the United States. Good. Apud estas apud is on. La, the. Here we go. Orienta. Yeah, again from Latin, as you predicted. Occident, Orient. On the east coast. Mar ordo sub in de sine pro ad cum ex ablative. Interesting. Sub it said in space, the ablative astronaut. Ablative astronaut? What? All of these, all of these uh -huh. um, 
prepositions uh -huh. take an object that is abrogated. Oh, gotcha. And, and so the mnemonic spells out Sid Space, which is oh. the name of an astronaut <laughs> called the Ablative Astronaut. That's the mnemonic. Did you come up with that? Did you come up with that? Hello? Yes. You did come up with that? Where'd you uh, go? Oh, who came up with it? I don't know. That's what we were taught in my Latin class. Wonderful. So I don't know if my Latin teacher had made it up or uh, if he got it from somewhere. Like a winner. All right. So with the sident part. So what will we? Yeah. Well, let's talk about that next. Then incident is there. Decide. Sine. Pro side. I don't recognize. Add side. That one would be there if we add the ad prefix to kidentem. What does that come out? Accident. at? Accident. That's the one. Cum kidere. We do have an coincide. That doesn't here. work, but we have to add in. There is another position Ooh, where put in the basic form is obs. And that's what this um, accident is, like against, kind of. Okay. Occur, it has this one too. Mm. Obsolete, I suppose, has it. Well, if you think about what happens in the West, what would be a good thing to name? What would be a good verbal action or verbal compound to describe the, the signature event of the West? Uh, the sun setting. Exactly. So falling down. The kid is a reduced form of cadere to fall, from which we also get case. And what is the e n t oh. there at the end? E not really. Uh, what is it? Derives a. It derives a agentive. That's the word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Or really a present active participle. Venu con me alla suda mar bordo di Francio. Venu the imperative come with me con me alla suda mar bordo di Francio. Come with me to alla interesting to the so southern coast of France. Norden, suden, orienten, occidenten. Was the Latin word for south, Levi? Norden, uh, Suden, Orienten, okay. Occidenten. Uh, Australis. Good. And the north one? Uh, Mi logias ce la orienta mar bordo de Usono. Mi logias ce la orienta mar bordo de Usono. Mi logias, I live. Ce. Was that near? At. On. Mm -hmm. Orienta mar bordo de of the United States. Ni iras ne nien. Iras ni we are going nowhere. We go, we're going. Now here. Okay, that's just for a few hours. Thank you for watching and tuning in. I will say good night. Good night. And we'll see you next time. Anyang higeseo. Are you here to